Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. For those of you who have been listening to this show long enough, you know that we uh, we scream and preach and espouse the value of physical media wherever we possibly can, but there are some places, there are some people who take it to a completely different level. And guess what? If you're within the sound of my voice, that must mean you're in the seats with once more. As always, my name is Dave Voigt, and I'm the host of this podcast, where we sit down with a wide-ranging variety of entertainment industry professionals and we pick their brain about current projects, state of the industry, how they got started, and so very much more, in a light and in a conversational fashion. And you know, if you like how we do things around here, I'm going to go out on a limb uh, and assume that you do, because let's face it, you're listening right now. And if you are listening, then subscribe. Hit that subscribe button. Give us the old five-star rating on your podcast provider of choice. We're available pretty much everywhere. Places like Apple, Amazon, Spotify, Google. And plus, we archive every single one of our episodes over to our In The Seats YouTube channel. So you can give us a like and subscribe there as well. We'd absolutely appreciate it. Also, don't hesitate to check us out on social media. We're on the Facebook, the Twitter, the Instagram, the Letterboxd, the TikTok. And, well, probably a few other places, too. Uh, at In The Seats for all sorts of fun updates, and finally, and I do dare say most importantly, please pay us a visit over at In The Seats, intheseats.ca, for all the latest and greatest from the world of film, television, basically the moving image at large. Because guess what? If we live to watch it and write about it and talk about it, we love it even more when you come by and read about it and listen about it. So please do us that kindness and come on by and pay us a visit. On this episode, we are back at the altar of physical media, a celebration therein with a film, a documentary called uh, Kim's Video, which is uh, a celebration of, you know, the video store, the iconic video store, which uh, there have been so many iterations thereof, but this one was unique. It, It was a unique store, a different store in New York City that inspired a generation of different cinephiles before it mysteriously closed its doors, but ultimately sent its legendary film archive, which was tens of thousands of, of, of movies, VHS, discs, uh, the whole nine yards, to uh, a Sicilian village for safekeeping and archival. Uh, and it felt a little, well, as we've seen in the film, it felt a little dubious. It felt a little questionable, as it were. But... Uh, this story is a pair of, is is the story of uh, of someone who who sets off uh, to Sicily to 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 find the archive and to take part in it as was promised in the original agreement that we see in the film. But it becomes uh, it becomes more than just a an ode to physical media and to cinema. It's it's it becomes almost a bit of a thriller and a, and a race against time to to rescue a beautiful archive of uh, physical media and cinema, which uh, we here in the seats obviously believe in so very much. Uh, in case you didn't already know, uh, Kim's video is out now from our friends at Draft House Films on uh, various VOD platforms. It's also available on uh, uh, Blu-ray and DVD um, from various retailers, probably also them themselves. But we had the unique pleasure of sitting and talking with the writers and directors of the film, David Redmond and Ashley Sabin, uh, just about the origin of uh, wanting to tell the story and getting it all together and uh, this wild journey that they took us on. It is, uh, let's just say, if you love your DVDs and your Blu-rays, you're going to love Kim's video and you're going to appreciate it because it's one of those stories that, at least for me as a physical media fan, you get invested in from minute one. It's uh, it's different from the average uh, Ode to the Video Star documentary, which are all great in their own way, but this has definitely got a different layer to it, and I can't recommend it highly enough. But uh, like I said, check out Kim's video. Uh, it's on Blu-ray and various on-demand platforms now, but first enjoy our talk with David Redman and Ashley Sabin, because between you and me, it's a pretty darn good one. All right, now obviously, first off, David, Ashley, I mean, just thank you so much for the time today. I really appreciate this, and uh, I mean, as you can see by part of my back wall, I am... Uh, I'm a kindred spirit when it comes to the physical media, so that's, this feels like uh, this feels like an emotional like thing that I had to do to be able to talk about this movie today. But thank you for the time. Uh, thank you for thank having you. us. I want to know what films, like what titles, what's the genres behind you? <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a lot. It's 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 all over the map. Great. There's Criterion, I love that. There's Shaw Brothers. There's you know all all the colors of the rainbow. I'm not gonna. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. 
Now, I mean, I guess my first question is, I mean, as I can imagine ex-patrons of Kim's video, like when, where did the idea to sort of make a film about this sort of start? Was it just over dinner one day or like where did sort of the impetus to be like, what ever happened? Well, it's funny because when we were members of Kim's video, we just thought that it would always be there. And we were always there almost, I wouldn't say every day, but every other day at least. We couldn't stay out of the store. And during those years, we never took a single photograph in the store. And then when it left, we were in Siberia making a movie titled Girl Model. And I believe that was in October. Sorry, we got to turn. turn. No problem. I believe that was in October 2008. And we received an email indicating that Kim's video is shutting down. And we were just in shock. And we were so far away and too far away that we couldn't we couldn't go back to New York and try to capture, you know, the boxing of the movies and it's depart it, it, it departing to Palermo. So but, it took it took us. Well, go ahead. Well, yeah. but yeah. So there was um, Scarby, who's the main politician in the movie, started the whole one year old homes in in Salemi in Sicily. Now it's like a big thing in all of Italy. But there was one a one year old home. The obligation was to clean it up, you know, reconstruct it because there was um, earthquake damage from the 60s, a big earthquake in in Sicily. And then not only that, you had to hire local people in. And I contacted a, a like an estate agent in, um, in Salemi and said, I want a one-year-old home so I could be close to the collection. So we were this close back in 2009 to getting a one-year-old home <laughs> just so we could be close to the collection. <laughs> just so we could like... Yeah, rent the movies for yeah, free because yeah. one of the conditions mm. that Mr. Kim imposed uh, on Salemi was that former members of Kim's video will be allowed to rent movies for free if they go to Salemi and find them. I mean, this is one of those stories that, you know, if you pitch it as a pitch it as a fictional script and sort of brought it into <laughs> Hollywood, they would have thrown it <laughs> the door and gone, no, this never happened. This is not believable. Go get out of my office. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's we're, funny you say that because we're writing, we've written a script based on the making of it. Really? Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> yes. But you've proven it. Like, this is like the documentary is proof of concept. Okay. <laughs> Do that without the documentary, then that's fair. But no, proof of concept. I absolutely love that. <laughs> But I mean, I guess like my next question is like, how do you sort of start digging up research? Like, like, how do you start finding old footage or talking to people? I can imagine it's when a place like that closes, there's going to be sort of, you know, uh, everyone's going to kind of go to the wind a little bit. Yeah. Well, I I, yeah. I, I I called my archival research <laughs> researcher named Ashley Saban. <laughs> I went, yeah, I did some, dip, some diving deep into just talking to people, but the thing is, is that the biggest regret I have is that, well, two, there was the Nigerian um, security guards. And then there was this one woman. I think she was Puerto Rican. Mm -hmm. I got in touch with her because the security guards were also part of the whole thing with Kim's video. Like they were, I they would eyeball you. Even if you were trustworthy, they would eyeball you. Like, are you stealing um, DVDs or VHS? And this one woman, I actually got in touch with her and her, her partner was sick. So we never got, you know, we never could. It was like passing ships trying to interview her. I would have loved because she was a character. I could tell with the phone calls, like she was a seriously interesting woman. I'm like, how did you arrive there? Like, how did Mr. Did Mr. Kim interview you? Like, who interviewed? interviewed you what did you think of this whole operation how did you create the secret police of kim's video yeah i mean it would yeah. have been amazing anyways that's just one reg i mean you have a, we always have regrets when we make these films but it just was talking to people and then you know it's not all it's not a survey of kim's video you know it starts out yeah. with these talking heads, which was really hard for us because we really didn't want the talking heads we kept pulling them out as we were editing and then we would show people and they'd say, I don't, especially if they didn't know Kim's video, they'd say, I have no idea what this place is. I don't get what you guys are doing. So then we're like, okay, put the talking heads back in so people understand the importance of this place if you weren't a member. Um, but it's really, you know, it's a journey film. It's a caper film. It's a detective film. It's a weird experimental film. It's like all that. So 
it just was like, you know, we would start talking to people. We'd talk to Alex. We talked to Sean. We talked to a lot of different, um, Eric, a lot of different people. And that would, it was sort of just, it would ping pong to someone else. It wasn't kind of, you know, it wasn't the normal kind of like, you know, let's go to the archive and let's go find out where the, you know, it's, it was, does anyone have photos? Can we find photos? Can we rip photos off the internet? There weren't that many photos. Um, well, Alex so. put us in touch with a, a woman yes. who shot the black and white 16 millimeter footage inside Kim's video. And when we contacted her, she said, I'm sorry, I'm in Minnesota right now. But if you just happen to be in Connecticut, that 16 millimeter roll is in my dad's um, attic. In Connecticut. In yeah. Connecticut. And we Which, were 45 minutes away. My mom's in Connecticut. <laughs> so we just drove over to his, the parents' house and we're like, can we, we'll pay for the transfer and we'll give you the transfer because you didn't have a transfer of it. Um, and so. And it, then we, we tracked down some, uh, another filmmaker from Ireland who loved Kim's video. He actually made a short that you can find online. I don't remember the title of it. And he allowed us to use 10 seconds of his footage. So we licensed it, we paid for it. And that's the only exterior facade that you see of a moving image of Kim's video that exists today. Wow. That's wild. Yeah. Maybe there's more, you know, it's like, we have, you know. I mean, other than, when I say of Kim's video, I mean the, the St. Mark's store, the St. Right. Mark's, okay. Right. Because there were the only stores, store. right. But they were crazy. Like we've got a, a photo even of um, one of the clerks with Iggy Pop you know, standing next, cause she had like a camera and she's like, Bang. and yeah. that didn't even make it in the film, but it's just the stuff that came out in the process was really interesting. No, I mean, speaking of all that, I mean, I think it's kind of a credit to you guys as filmmakers, because I mean, obviously you could be doing this one film and then once you go to Italy and shit starts to get weird, it's going to be a bit of a different movie. And I mean, I can, can you walk me through, I guess maybe those initial experiences of, I guess, okay, what are we going to do now kind of thing after you sort of get that initial pushback? What are we going to do now after we got pushback from Italy? Um, you're, you're talking about, <clears throat> are you referring to the the entry into the video collection? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that pushback, I am... David's pretty good with pushback. I mean, it's like he Push, just... I mean, when I... Yeah. Pushback is an invitation. Right. That, that's, <laughs> that, that's, that's my interpretation. So anytime someone pushes back, I see as it is an opportunity and an invitation for more contact and through those contact the repetition of contact eventually we're going to have a mutual understanding of whatever it is that we both want and it just happened to take about six years to get there it's like dancing almost like david just never pushed back he would get pushed and then he'd just walk up and say hi how are you let's do you want to have a conversation you know it's like he didn't it was never a no is not a no, it's a maybe. I guess that's isn't that that must be some kind of saying. No, no, I know, I know where you guys are going. No, for sure. Because uh, this just to me in watching the whole thing, I mean, as obviously uh, a film fan and purveyor of wanting to have something in my hand as well when I watch a movie, there is like this movie could not have been made any other way than out of love. Like it does not feel like this was a movie that could have existed without having love for not just movies but those movies and i mean i'm kind of curious for both of you what is it about the fact that these archives exist i mean like you know the one you guys obviously showed the, the one on my back wall why is it why from your perspective is it so important yeah. oof this yeah. you want us to get on a soapbox i mean now, no, huh? what's not a soapbox I, it's a soapbox for me I do it that please do it <laughs> well, I mean, I guess you'll go first because, because, you know, I'm still trying to answer that question and I can't come up with a rational or reasonable answer. The only thing that I can say is exactly what happened. I was curious about the collection. What happened to it? It's a missing part of my life, thousands of other people's lives as well. So I went out to rent a movie and when I entered the collection, the movie spoke to me and they said, we've been waiting for you. You've arrived. We want to go home. And I started talking to the movies and touching the movies and speaking to the movies and telling them, don't worry, you're going to go home. I'm going to get you out. I'm going to come back with help. And I didn't know when and I didn't know how, but I knew the movies would leave. So it took six years from that entry uh, for the collection to finally uh, depart. Yeah. So why you're asking a, a why question. And the only thing that I can think of is 
because that collection gave us so much that it deserves to continue to exist so that it can give other people even more. And that's the only thing that I can think of. All right. So now I get on my soapbox. Here we go. Do it. Ready for it? (laughs) No, for me, it's like the most frustrating thing right now is that, and you know, I, I say all this with a grain of salt because I do feel like the streamers are funding filmmakers right now, but there's something about it at the base of it that's not right in this sense that when I say, okay, I saw this film and then someone says, where can I check that out? Oh, you need blank streamer. Oh, well, I don't have blank streamer. How am I going to watch that film? So at a certain point, the, the idea of film goes away from the part of it, which is the viewers, Hmm. like we own cinema. This is like, yes, the creator is part of it, but at the end of it, it's a viewer and it's the interpretation and it's the connection and it's the community. So once that's taken away and it's just about the commercial aspect of paying a monthly fee of $11.99, that's not right to me. That's really that that's that's a that's like a cancer inside of someone. Hang on, hold this. You know, I'm and gonna, it just gonna... is gonna grow, and it's 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 gonna rot away, and it's it feels icky and wrong. So it really is about. We just went to a screening, and um, we did a, a tour in Glasgow. We did a screening in uh, Glasgow, and then Edinburgh. And in Edinburgh, they had a DVD VHS ex- exchange in a box. And someone made this homemade box. I brought about six of our films that we have on DVD. Do you know the last time that I was able to do that? Probably about six, seven years ago. Yeah. It felt, those were the first films gone. I was like, gosh, these people are going to see our movie. As a maker, that's inc- that. It, it, I felt elated. I can't even ca- tell totally. you. Like, Yeah. Yeah. What is that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I found this budget planner th- this weekend. Do you see what this says? Yeah, you crossed that streaming. You just put Kim's video. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. The physicality of the uh, the media. It's collective. The, the interaction, it's yeah. the interaction that these material objects, uh, you know, they, they bring people together. Like, right? I want to see your collection. I'm like, should, next time I'm in Toronto, I'm going to call you up and just show up at your, I don't know if that's your house or office, but I'm going to come there and just, I want to like, look at what you're interested in. Absolutely. Like Amen. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, Toronto, believe me, you're, you're more than welcome to come into my apartment. Absolutely. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but I mean, it also speaks, I have got to imagine it speaks to you as filmmakers as well, because when curations are locked and like there's only a limited amount of you know however many thousands that people can see it's like i can imagine as filmmakers as storytellers you want to see the finished melodrama you want to see the korean sci-fi movie you want to be able to experience as much as possible to be able to learn from it and go forward yeah like get, what is with this robotic algorithm come on people it, like robots are not human they are not curators i am sorry that's why i'm not scared about robots writing for what you know with the whole thing with hollywood it's like and the strikes that went on it's like they cannot replace the quirkiness of humans and humanity it just is not possible so you know i mean we can go on and on about this but the films we went to bergman week okay i went to bergman's like his where he watched films every single day at 3 p.m and there was a 4 a.m screaming screening of Hour of the Wolf. Do you think that kind of thing can exist with a goddamn algorithm and me watching it on my small computer? Like that experience, I will remember that for the rest of my life. (laughs) You know, what's interesting. Bergman even had his own archive and we were invited to go sit in uh, his chair that was surrounded by, I don't know how many VHS. And DVD, yeah. And but mostly VHS. Yeah. And directly in front of the chair was a screen with the V uh, the VCR and his own archive in which he organized in his own thematic way. And it was just an incredible to be able to touch them and pick them up and think he watched this movie and how did this influence his life? Uh, how did it influence him to possibly make other movies as well? You know? Yeah. Uh, how did he get 
this movie. I, I love that you say that, just the idea of thematically, because, I mean, the, the second you said that, I was thinking of uh, Cusack and High Fidelity organizing his records autobiographically. And, I mean, it's just one of those things that, you know, it do, you know it doesn't exist on a playlist or it doesn't exist sort of in an algorithm like you say it's it's there is such an emotional connection to being able to to have it there to touch it to go through it to interact with it 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 makes cinema such a completely different experience and i mean obviously i don't want to give too much away but i mean david ashley i mean you guys have done a great thing with this movie i really absolutely adored it i cannot wait for more people to see it when you get awesome. the fictionalized version off the ground, we have plenty of wonderful tax credits up here in Toronto. Oh, Come gosh. up and shoot you your movie. Us, <laughs> but can you find us 20000 k That's all we need to get, get the, ourselves going. It's like we need a little money trade. That's all. I'll, you know what? I, I, I'll, I'll get to work for sure. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> but I mean, obviously, just as one fan to another, just keep doing the good work. And I mean, again, thank you so much for the time today. And thank you for the love of of physical media because again it's you know streamers can come and go so licenses can f- drop an ad but if, if you've got it in your hand you've got it in your hand you can watch it whenever the hell you want that's right L- long live physical media long Amen. live lunch meat <laughs> <laughs> and i can't wait for this film to be on physical media fingers crossed it does one day. absolutely that's released that's the exciting thing all righty thanks again guys thank you yeah, thank bye-bye you. all right bye and don't forget to, to visit our friends over at Bay Street Video for all your DVD, Blu-ray rental, or purchasing needs this summer, as they are still open for curbside and some mailing delivery as well. Over at 1172 Bay Street, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you can give them a call at 416-964-9088. That's 416-964-9088. Or send them an email at baystreetvideoto at gmail.com for any of your DVD and and Blu-ray needs.